Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity is finally here man. How are you enjoying the game so far? I've heard from quite a few of you that the game is actually quite challenging at times and in this video I want to give you six quick ways to go through and actually complete Hyrule Warriors with as little frustration as possible. So let's go. Hey what's up, it's Derek with Zelda Theory, helping you forget about the stresses of life by talking about the best video game series of all time, The Legend of Zelda. This channel will consist of Zelda guides, walkthroughs, top fives, theories, as well as Age of Calamity videos just like this one. So if you are new here, take a minute to subscribe and turn on all notifications. Look man, whatever playstyle you have while playing through Age of Calamity, whatever you do, do not succumb to button mashing. And here's why. I'm sure that while playing through the game, you've noticed that there is a healthy balance of chaos, as well as when battling the hordes of enemies you encounter almost instantly with the relative simple combat controls making button smashing an extremely tempting situation. However, the key to playing Warriors games effectively is playing them with a sense of efficiency and strategy. Each one of the characters in Age of Calamity has a set amount of different combos that work well in different circumstances, and learning which is best in each scenario is essential and extremely crucial to whether or not you will survive. While these games do focus on brute force and repetitive combat, there is a layer of thoughtfulness that mindless button mashing just flat out ignores. Not only will deliberate play help in the midst of a battlefield overrun with enemies, it'll make the gameplay more engaging too. I think this is true for a lot of fighting games or games in the hack and slash genre. Try your best to resist the urge to mash all the buttons at once and you're well on your way to completing Age of Calamity. In addition to learning the ins and outs of the combos of each of the characters, Another overlooked feature of Warriors titles is the strategic element, which I sort of touched on in the previous point. Most of the battles in Age of Calamity give you complete control of multiple captains or leaders that can be swapped in and out at any time. The entire point of this isn't just for adding variety to the gameplay though, as multitasking in Age of Calamity is something that is crucial to your success in the game. Very frequently in Age of Calamity there are points on the map that will all be attacked at once and it's up to you as the player to strategically point out all these points of conflict. By using the map, you can assign the captains to different tasks and cycle between them to cover the battlefield. Age of Calamity pretty much pushes you in this direction, but in my opinion the game doesn't really stress just how important it is to always be rotating between fighters and giving orders. An example of this strategic gameplay is in Pikmin 3 Deluxe where time and resource management are essential. By keeping your team moving to different points across the field, you can prevent the opponent from capturing strongholds and wiping out squads of friendly AI more efficiently. You should always have half your attention on the map and where captains are and toggle between them as needed. I know, I know man, this does sound a little complicated, but after a couple of hours, or 30, you will get this down for sure. In the original Hyrule Warriors, you had access to traditional Zelda items such as the Hookshot and Boomerang for example. In Age of Calamity, you will have access to the Sheikah runes from Breath of the Wild as well as various elemental rods. While it can be easy to ignore these items, they can really turn the tide in your favor. Many enemies have weaknesses to one element or item and using them can expose their weak point gauges. For example, attacking a fire-based enemy with the Ice Rod will obviously do more damage to that specific enemy. As I mentioned before in this video, efficient combat is extremely crucial, so experimenting with these tools to figure out their uses is definitely worthwhile. It's really cool how you are able to use the runes from Breath of the Wild in this game. Not only do you have complete access to the bombs, cryonis, stasis, and magnesis, but you are able to use them in a way that is just completely overpowered if you sort of think about it. It fits this addition to Hyrule Warriors perfectly though, and it's a welcome feature, at least to me. 
Very similar to Super Smash Bros, and kind of ironic in a way, all the characters in Age of Calamity use the same setup and basic combos. However, they all have distinct styles, with unique abilities mapped to ZR. These specific combos often inform other moves and how they chain together. Most of the time you can choose which character to bring into battle, so it's worth experimenting with each to figure out which playstyle feels the best to you. There really is no wrong answer here as far as to which character to bring into any particular fight, so it's largely a question of player preference here, which is really cool. We all have our favorite champion, so again just choose your favorite and max that specific character out. Or on the completely other side of things, you can just invest more time and max the levels of all the characters if you really want to sink some time into this game. While the smaller hordes of enemies on the field can be destroyed pretty easily, enemy captains or leaders and other more impactful foes cannot be. What I'm really trying to say here is that simply using good combos, runes, and items won't be enough, as they'll do relatively small amounts of damage. To truly take on the quote unquote bosses in Age of Calamity, the key is patience, persistence, and pattern recognition, which honestly is the case for most enemies and bosses in the Zelda series, even in games in general. Once you understand the patterns of their unique attacks, the individual fights become a little less difficult. It's extremely important that you make the boss fights easier on yourself by breaking up larger enemies by striking at their weak points, which only becomes available by learning attack patterns and waiting for the right opportunity. In these cases, it's important to wait and attack when the weak points are exposed, as doing anything else or reverting to button mashing can lead to an unnecessary damage and knockback that could force you to miss an opening. Study the movement of the bosses in each given situation, and you'll be that much closer to completing this game with relative ease. The core fundamentals of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity is the battles themselves, but between most of the encounters, you can actually spend a significant amount of time spending resources to fulfill tasks on the overworld. This is one of the many ways to engage with the map of Hyrule, but I think it's absolutely worth doing. Rewards span from new combo trees to vendors on specific points on the map that can upgrade gear quite exceptionally. This loot can be central to beefing up a party to the point where tougher battles really aren't that complicated. Plus, many of the resources needed to complete these quests are passively obtained in battle, so there's no excuse not to complete these tasks. Unless of course you've already sunk an insane amount of hours into the game and are ready to move on to another Zelda game. So hey man, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, turn on all notifications, and check out the other Zelda content on the channel. YouTube's recommended video for you specifically, as well as another video that I think you might enjoy, should be clickable right about now. So continue to be the light, and remember, it's dangerous to go alone. Let's head on over to some more Zelda content. <laughs>